and best practices in NGO advocacy for health sector financing and child, in child and fam family health. So these are to be done by PACFA and East Coalition partners. And the first person here is Madam Chiwe Onumonu from the Association of the Advancement of Family Planning. Please, if she's here, can we give her a round of applause as she comes? Okay, probably as we're waiting for her, we're calling on the next person, Mrs. Beatrice Eluaka, Civil Society for Scaling Up Nutrition in Nigeria. Please, a round of applause for her, she's coming up. Then the next person, Dr. Aminu Magashi, Community Health Research. And then the number four on the list, Dr. Emmanuel Abanida, Family Planning Consultants. Then we have the next person, Pharmacist Ayuba, from Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Please can you come up. And the last but not, okay, we have Hajia Adama Kachala from Federation of Muslim Women's Association of Nigeria, Form 1. Please, can she come up? And then the last but not the least, and she happens to be the lead panelist, Dr. Omoumi Ola Balu. Please, she's from Development Research and Project Center. Wow. I think I love these panelists. They are evenly distributed. Three women, three men. Nigeria is getting there. So let's just go on. Um, the topic, as we said before, is lessons learned and best practices in NGO advocacy for health sector financing in child and family health. And um, each of them will be given five minutes to talk about the topic. And please, lest we are trying to like, you know, be on time. Let's be on time, please. Then there will be 20 minutes of curated questions from the moderator. Then 10 to 15 minutes of question and answer with the audience ending with a summary and thanks. So um, right now we go over to a brief overview of the session. The Partnership for Advocacy in Child and Family Health Project, PACFA Nigeria, is a pilot project supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as an innovative initiative to learn about the potential for engaging indigenous civil society organizations in Nigeria for the health sector. The project is implemented by seven Nigerian civil society groups working together to encourage government to plan for and increase funding to four important areas in child and family health in Nigeria. The four areas are, one, routine immunization, Two, family planning. Three, amoxicillin DT as first line treatment, FLT for childhood pneumonia, and lowers zinc as treatment for childhood diarrhea. Then number four is nutrition. The project is designed as an evidence-based advocacy intervention which aims to catalyze government at national and state levels to comply with pledges in the area of funding levels, administrative regulatory procedures, and public health policy. The project partners working in seven states, and the states are Oyo, Lagos, Kano, Kaduna, Nasarawa, Niger, and Bauchi states, 
and at national are. So we are starting with the first person. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Chiwe Onomono. I am the national coordinator of the Association for the Advancement of Family Planning. It's a coalition actually that has a passion to see a change in the landscape of family planning in Nigeria. Because I don't know how many of you are aware that every day Nigeria loses 111 women as a result of pregnancy and childbirth. And evidence shows that at least 33% of these deaths can be avoided if we have an effective family planning program working in Nigeria. So that is why we are part of this partnership because it's a partnership that addresses issues surrounding child and family health. And I've been asked to speak for five minutes specifically on the lessons learned uh, being part of this NGO advocacy. I will say that it was actually very interesting and very um, insightful for us as AFP to be part of this project because, because we had been talking family planning, singing family planning like we were all alone. But being part of this partnership helped us to also link family planning to the other issue areas like immunization, nutrition, uh, child health, and even the overall health of the uh, woman and the child. So. For me, working together as a group, as a coalition, actually helped us to raise the issue of family planning and the issues that are affecting family planning um, as, uh, in, a, in the same country. So we're able to push the agenda forward within the midst of the coalition. And what that meant is that we practice what we call a one voice advocacy, meaning that as we go for advocacy, we are together as a team seated here, and we are individually, we are talking about the, the different issues and presenting information and linking it to the, the issue the other person is talking about. So what it does is that it reduces the apathy to advocacy, which many of the um, stakeholders, put it that executives, if we had done it this way today, AFP will go for family planning tomorrow. TSN will go for nutrition. They are tired of NGOs coming and talking and to them. So this one voice advocacy helped to avoid that multiple advocacies that targeting the same person many of the times. So it, it was very, very uh, insightful and a lesson learned for us that um, we intend to continue. And then it also helped us to really look in depth into the relationship between the key issue areas and identify the beneficial relationships in such a way that it made it easier for them to think through what they are doing and be able to, say, you know, pa family planning many times is seen as an appendage in many of the, uh, uh, in this country. So seeing it in the context of the health of the child and the family made it easier for them to link it to what needs to be done and to do that. And the partnership also helped us to kind of raise awareness as a team in terms of um, one common thing that affects the four key issue areas, and that is funding. It's the same person that you will fund family planning that is supposed to fund nutrition. And so the budget advocacy we did helped us to target all these things and refer the policy makers or decision makers to their own policies that says we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do that. But you cannot do anything without money. So that budget advocacy we did together, we are able to share information relating to all the different budgets that different issue areas have at national level, at state level, so that it makes a lot of sense for the policy maker to look at it critically and to determine how um, to invest in what they are doing. Because the, what comes out is that if you invest in one, you're losing the return on investment in a way. Uh, it, it's less. If you invest in the four of them, your return on investment will be higher as opposed to investing in only one. So it makes a better sense for 
the policymakers to look at them critically together and invest. And also, we learned a lot from one another. We learned more about immunization. They learned more about family planning and so on and so It was really a very good experience sharing, which will, has put us in a better pedestal to be able to continue the advocacy. Because you may be talking to somebody about family planning and a question crops about nutrition. And there's a nutrition person there to really respond adequately to that question. And you, as, as yourself, you're also learning. We also, uh, the, one of the other experiences is the fact that it helps us to build capacity as a team. And in building that capacity, you're also uh, uh, building the capacity of the other team. If we did central trainings together, we're able to, in the illustrations and things like that, the staff are able to connect the differences and the commonalities between the, the um, um, other issue areas. So it has been a very worthwhile experience. Uh, uh, we learned a lot of lessons in the sense that we are more poised, put it that way, to even continue to work together. Because before then, we were doing our, our own thing in silos, not really um, thinking through how it affects the other person. So I think um, I, I, I've seen her that she's standing up, my time is <laughs> up. So uh, let me hand over the microphone to her. Thank you very much. Please a round of applause for her. We can see how it had affected her in her own area. So we are going on to the second person, Mrs. Beatrice Iluaka. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand on existing protocol. Um, I represent civil society scaling up nutrition in Nigeria. I'm the project director, CS Sun. Um, CS Sun is a coalition of civil society organizations, NGOs that share a common vision. And what is our vision? To transform Nigeria into a country where every citizen has food. And not only has food, but also is nutrition secured. And what is our mission? Our mission is to mobilize uh, state and non-state actors to one, generate um, information and share information, increase their awareness, and get people to begin to demand for what is rightfully theirs in terms of nutrition. Um, so we are doing that, addressing the very issue of malnutrition that we have in this country. Many of you may have heard, and you hear it every day, that every day 2,300 children die from preventable causes. I'm sure you're going to hear it again today. Now imagine we are all sitting in this room, and this is a hall that takes 500 people. Just take a look around you and imagine 2,300 is more than about five times the population of people sitting in this room, and we lose that per day from preventable causes. And as far as nutrition is concerned, half of those deaths are contributed by malnutrition. So we have a serious problem. And even among the children who survive, 33% of them, one out of every three of them is stunted. When we talk about stunting, we are saying they are too short for their age. Not only too short for their age, stunting does not only come with physical stunting, it also comes with poor brain development. And let us imagine what will happen in our country if we don't do anything, as currently is the situation, that 33%, one in three children, is uh, stunted. What kind of population are we going to have in the future, in the next few years? What kind of adults? Stunting comes, children who go to school are not able to learn. When they learn, they don't retain whatever they have learned, and so on. So that is a serious issue. Now, how have we addressed the issue? Nigeria has come up with a beautiful policy on food and nutrition. 
how far have we gone with implementing of this policy? That is a big challenge. Now, the civil society scaling up nutrition has worked with government to come up with um, a national strategic plan of action for the implementation of this beautiful policy that we have. We have also encouraged the states that we have worked in under the PACPA project to domesticate this policy and plans. And each of our states have come up with um, costed action plans to implement uh, the policy on food and nutrition. Now, these plans have been costed. The issue of funding to make sure that the plans are fully uh, implemented becomes a challenge, a big challenge. And so what have we done about this? We have engaged the policy makers, we have engaged legislators by conducting uh, legislative retreats. We have also um, done some uh, meetings that where we brought together the legislators and the policy makers so that they can understand why they have to put funds into uh, um, implementing nutrition activities. And at one of those meetings, one finance director actually said, I wish I knew what I now know about nutrition. I will not be slicing the budget that comes for nutrition. I hope that that was also translated into action uh, you know, as we go along. Um, in terms of the advocacy, we have also um, developed briefs and so on that we take when we do our advocacy. And I am glad to report to you that all the states where we work in have been able to come up with domesticated action, costed action plans. They have also put money into implementation. And we are monitoring the implementation of the activities, developing scorecards. Some of you may have picked up uh, some of the cards out there uh, to see what the states have done. We are not where we want to be yet, but the PACFA project afforded us the opportunity to make an improvement. And um, we hope that the next time we meet, we will have more success stories to share with you in terms of the implementation of nutrition activities at national level as well as at the state level. Thank you very much. Please a round of applause for her. And um, we are going to the next person, Dr. Aminu Magashe. Uh, thank you so much, the Master of Ceremony, uh, my distinguished uh, colleagues. I have just uh, five minutes, so I'll be more uh, focus to share the lessons learned in the, the healthcare financing advocacy we have been doing uh, over the last uh, two and a half years. The focus of our organization within the PACFA project, uh, CHR, is to uh, advocate for increasing domestic funding to roti immunization in Kano, Kaduna, uh, Niger, Bauchi, and also at national level. And of course, to also participate fully with my colleagues here to increase the budget uh, overall. That is the target of our own advocacy over the last two and a half years. So uh, what was the lessons learned? Or what were the lessons learned? You had this morning uh, one of the key lessons learned. The Minister of Health, uh, Professor Adewale, commended Bauchi State Government uh, this morning for reaching the 16% uh, Abuja targets uh, in 2017. That was one of the lessons learned of a combined effort of a local uh, advocacy uh, by so many partners at the state level. A, a focused, sustained, realistic advocacy by local partners is actually working as a lessons learned. When we combine our effort together, uh, it brought the issue uh, on the front burner to the highest political actor in the state, uh, the executive governor, uh, Governor Emi Abakar. And that, to me, is one of the lessons learned we are seeing today 
everybody, everywhere you go in Nigeria, they are talking about both your state meeting the 16%. The secret is the partnership and also the effort of the local partners, BASAM uh, in Bauchi, the, the assembly, working with the NGOs here, we put that sustained advocacy using evidence and a scorecard to show that uh, the, the previous year's budget uh, were far below the required budget to improve health, and the governor has actually committed the 16% uh, budget. Now, the advocacy lessons learned did not stop there. It also moved to releasing the money, because it's not only about allocating money, the government need to release money. We have a success story in the fourth state where the government released 100% immunization money. This also is part of the advocacy effort. In Bochy State, uh, the Bochy State government, the budget this year uh, is 179 million, and I can confirm to you by July this year, 100% uh, percent of that money was released. In Kaduna State, the money for immunization uh, this year is 125 million. The entire money was released. Uh, in uh, Niger State, 91 million, more than half of the money. In Kano, about 450 for this year, a million and also more than half of the money were all released as we are moving into the last quarter of the year. It's not only we uh, on this side of the table, it's the effort of the uh, a lot of coalitions we established uh, at the state level, Komin uh, in Niger, Katmam in Kaduna, Basam in Bauchi, Amkas in Kano, we strengthen those local structures to engage meaningfully with the government to be part of the discussion, the budget process, the advocacy, using the scorecard to galvanize action to make a change uh, in those uh, four states. So this is some of the lesson learned I want to mention. The second lesson learned I want to mention is participation of the local CSO in immunization. History has shown that uh, before the PACFA uh, intervention, everywhere you go, immunization working group at national and at state level is a business of the government and those who are putting the money, the international donors and the partners. That was previously. That is a game. When you look at the, the table that my brother, Dr. Faisal, presented this morning about the NERIC is the government and international partners. The PACFA has changed that narrative uh, over the two and a half years. Today, when you go to Kano, AMCAS is a member of the RI working group in Kano due to the advocacy effort that this project has uh, actually provided. When you go to Kaduna, the CADMAM, the local coalition body, is a member of the RI working group. When you go to Niger, the Komi co-chair is here today. She is a member of the Tax Force for Immunization. She is a member of the Healthcare Financing Working Group, courtesy of the sustained advocacy by this uh, project, and of course, in collaboration with everybody uh, here. When you go to national level, uh, like I said, every business was donors, those who have the big money, the big posts, the narrative has changed. We have now the National Immunization Financing Tax Team, uh, chaired by Dr. Ben Ayene, in that committee, you have so many local NGOs, including the media and the professional body. This to me are the lessons learned that we need to carry, we need to showcase, we need to generate discussion and sustain the effort beyond the PACFA uh, project. Now, the, the, the last one is the issue of a quarterly interactive dialogue. In Kaduna State today, they have established what they call hashtag Open Kaduna State Ministry of Health. It is an interactive forum that is happening every quarter, courtesy of the sustained advocacy uh, by the PACFA project and the CADMAM and the partners at the state level. The commissioners sit at the table with all head of the MDAs and answer the hard questions about how much money did you release over the last three months? How much commitment have been made in immunization, in family planning, in nutrition, in all this sector? This is an event that is happening every quarter and was highly commended by the, the highest political actor, Governor Erefai, in a cabinet meeting that this kind of forum should be sustained, should continue beyond what we are doing in the project. So let me pause here to allow my colleagues to also add more. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. We are going on to Dr. Iman Noel Abanida.
Thank you very much. My name is Emmanuel Abaneda. I'm the Executive Secretary of uh, Health Reform Foundation of Nigeria Health Fund, but also a family planning consultant to Park Farm. Well, um, the previous colleagues have talked about lessons learned, and I'm sure they are actually undercutting us because the lessons learned spread across, is cross-cutting, spreads across every one of us. So that gives me an opportunity to build a small context around the engagement of Health Fund in the Park Far Family Planning Project. As you know, Health Fund is a nationally based uh, SCSO that has membership in all the states of the Federation, and uh, the main mandate is to reform the health sector. And one of the products was the production and the enactment of the National Health Act, which was, I'm happy that one of the, the leaders of that particular effort, Dr. Ben Ayene is here, and who has also been mentioned by previous efforts, who has done a lot of work in all these areas. Now, Dr. Chinwe did mention some of the issues surrounding family planning. Nigeria is in trouble, and uh, we keep saying that there is hope and there is light uh, after the tunnel. I hope the light after the tunnel is not going to be the light of an oncoming train. We have had times without number that in the next 20, 25 years, our population will have doubled or even maybe more than that. It has a lot of challenges. Demographic dependency, you have issue of uh, social despondencies, and it has its own anthropological issues too, including increase in crime rate, increase in so many things. So what we have done with Parkfire in the past three years in Hefon is to look at how we can latch on some states, or your Nasarawa and uh, uh, Kaduna State, to see how we can drive and improve the trajectory in the family planning. And then we have done so when we had the, an initial lead analysis of what's happening in these states, where people have given statistics of what's happening, what appropriate six women do not have reproductive health commodities, and many of them are dying every day. As a matter of fact, when you are giving life, you are giving life, it's supposed to be a thing of joy. But in Nigeria, it's almost like an, the opposite. People are very apprehensive when somebody is getting pregnant because they cannot decide, and when they are delivering, Facilities are not there, so many women keep dying every day. We have succeeded in stimulating a lot of discussion and change in terms of what lessons we have learned to change one, the narrative, the political economic narrative in these three states. Well, how have we done that one? In Oyo State, for instance, we had engagement with the executives, engagement with the legislators. And I'm happy also that even the chairman of the Oyo State House uh, Assembly Committee on Health, uh, uh, Honorable Silas, uh, Lola is here and his colleagues also in the budget uh, in appropriation, they are here. What we have interacted with them and the state have been able to understand better that the issue is not just about condom, the issue is not just about whether you are using IUCD, the issue is about what is the impact of your attempt to control or to manage family planning we have on the de development and your social structure. You have better education if you have less population you are dealing with and are qualitative, you probably will be able to put less pressure on the infrastructures which you are having and so on and so forth. On the whole, using different strategies by Health Fund Park Park Coalition, which includes advocacy, includes coalition building, includes capacity building, includes impactive learning, and also includes you know, social coalition, we'll be able to pull a lot of traction, not only in your state, but also in Nasarawa State, where we worked with Pathfinder and other partner agencies, in Kaduna State, again, we worked with Cadman and other agencies, and all of our partners here, and we've succeeded, at least in most of these states. One, to have a costed implementation plan for family planning, and in some of the states, we have also, in Oyo State, we have done training for the execution of that implementation plan, and we have also done plan that in the, the next one year, this is how much we expect to get in the budget of Oyo State, and the budget of Nasarawa and Kaduna State, which has keep, kept improving uh, for family planning commodities. That's number one. Number two is that the coalition among all the members within this park far structure has helped us to have both vertical and horizontal learning. Many of us are concentrating on family planning, whereas we are working with colleagues who are also on, on the immunization and colleagues who are also on the nutrition. What lesson is there? We are just showing, we are showcasing to the state and the sub-state levels that you need to do work integrally. Cellularization will not help, and we have seen it work. 
in a place where you have a lot of human resource scarcity and paucity, the little person you have, or maybe the small health worker or the single health worker in the health facility should be able to deliver family planning, should be able to deliver immunization, should be able to deliver nutrition, and should be able to do at least simple bath way and maybe, maybe a, a, a child bath. So these are some of the lessons that we have learned. On the whole, we have seen that the traction which we have pulled and the coalition which we have built at the state will be able to sustain even when PAFA, current PAFA program goes away. It is our hope that because we use both the CSOs, the community-based organizations, and in fact the family-based organizations, church-based organizations in many of the states where we are working, and pull them together and tell them that, look, this is not about PAFA, this is not about CHR, but it's about you sustaining what we have done so that you can move ahead and have a family and have a country where the population is well managed, where there will be no explosion, where there will be no poverty, where we will be able to have manageable dependency ratio and have a good national development. That is the only way we can achieve universal health coverage, uh, sustainable development goals, and that's the only way we can achieve good national development. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are going over to pharmacist Ayuba, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Okay, thank you, moderator. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing on behalf of my program director, pharmacist Ibrahim Tanko Ayuba. My name is David Apoto. So the voice you'll be hearing is the voice of pharmacist Ayuba, but the person you are seeing is David. Just imagine if you were not, if you didn't live to see your fifth birthday. As we speak, one in every eight children in Nigeria will die before seeing their fifth birthday. And of those figures, every 24 hours, 1,100 children will die from preventable pneumonia and diarrhea. That equals to every hour you are seeing 46 innocent lives dying from preventable pneumonia and diarrhea. So in the next five hours I will be spending on this dialogue today, you'll be having roughly 230 children dying from preventable pneumonia and diarrhea. These statistics are the most recent, are from the most recent National Demographic and Health Survey report of Nigeria. To support the government in driving down these uh, preventable deaths, uh, my organization, PSN, has the mandate in the PACFA, coal uh, PACFA coalition to engage with the government and other relevant stakeholders to see how we can reduce and possibly eliminate preventable deaths from pneumonia and diarrhea. And one of the reasons for us doing this advocacy is a bit evident here. You hardly hear about pneumonia and diarrhea. There are other bony issues that are currently running. So in the past three years in the PACFA coalition, PSM PACFA, we have engaged with critical stakeholders through policy dialogues, through advocacy visits and meetings, capacity building. We have done community mobilization and sensitization. We have also done media engagement. We have also done press conferences and press releases on these issues. And we're happy to report to the House that as we sit in this auditorium, the government of Nigeria through the Federal Ministry of Health has revised the national treatment guidelines to include globally recommended essential medicines for the management of childhood pneumonia and diarrhea. I think we should clap for the, for the federal government. It's a milestone, if you know the history of reviewing the national treatment guideline, you will appreciate the, the little effort PSM PACFA has done in the past three years. The recommendations by, w, by WHO and UNICEF were signed into law in 2010. In fact, our government, represented by our president, was the co-chair of the United Nations Committee on Life-Saving Commodities in 2010. So it took us roughly, because this recommendation was reviewed in 2016, it took us 16, six, six solid years for the review to be done. Also, one of the progress that we have made in this project is also supporting the government 
to launch and disseminate that revised treatment guideline. We are so convinced that if that guideline is implemented, if it's domesticated and implemented across the country, we're going to have a drastic reduction in the mortalities of children from pneumonia and diarrhea and other childhood diseases, malaria, because they are all covered in the revised treatment guidelines. Some of the lessons we have learned from this three-year project is, um, first and foremost, complementing the effort of the government in institutionalizing global treatment guidelines is strategic if we are to drive down the current three-digit uh, mortality rate for children to a single digit by 2030. Recall that the Sustainable Development Goal 3, um, good health, well-being for all, at all ages, one of the key targets is to drive down child mortality rates to a single digit. As we speak, Nigeria is currently on three digits. So to drive it down to one digit by 2030, 2030 is very close by, it's not very far. So we have learned com complementary government effort is very important for us to achieve that goal. Secondly, we have also learned in this um, partnership for the past three years, that effective collaboration with indigenous group through capacity building is very important for you to achieve and sustain your advocacy efforts. No partner can do it alone. Until you carry the local groups, build their capacity on advocacy and engagement with the key stakeholders, you may not, you may not end childhood killer diseases, especially pneumonia and diarrhea. The last lesson that we have learned in this three-year project is that also working with development partners to support the government in achieving that goal of a, at least a single digit child mortality rate by 2030 is also very critical. None of us can achieve everything, but when we work together in collaboration, we will achieve more. Our, for us in the PSM PACFA project, looking forward, we, we are convinced that the tactics the activities and the strategies that we have deployed in this three-year project, if it is being optimized and so by supporting the government's plan in reducing that three digits to one digit child mortality rate by 2030, we will achieve that goal. Also, if the, statics, if the tactics and the strategies and all the other advocacy activities that PSM PACFA has used in the three-year project is deployed and applied at the state and local government level, there will be a drastic reduction in childhood mortality from pneumonia and diarrhea. I see my time is up. So maybe Thank you very during much, the interactive sir. session, we'll talk more about that. Thank oh. you. The next person is Hajia Adama Kachala from one. Thank you very much, MC. Good afternoon, everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Auzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajim. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the press, partners here present. My name is Adam Musa Kachala. I am standing in for my project director, Hajia Farida Sada Yusuf, who is unavoidably absent due to ill health. I am from Form Federation of Muslim Women's Associations in Nigeria, Form One. Form One is, a, is, a, is an umbrella body of women, uh, Muslim, women uh, Muslim women in Nigeria, which has presence since 36 days. It has a vision, and it has a mission. The vision is to see that a woman, women are empowered to be role model, to impact positively in the society. And the vision is to see that their so social economic status are raised up, so that at least it improves their socioeconomic status, the women, children, and the youth. It has presence in statistics, states, I've told you, with about with more than 600 affiliates that cast across Nigeria, including Abuja, and uh, with presence in local government areas in all the 36 states. Federation of Muslim Women's Associations in Nigeria is one of the indigenous, uh, eight indigenous organizations in PACFA project that is started with the responsibility to identify faith-based organizations. 
mobilize constituencies of traditional religious leaders and their groups and women groups to identify grassroots, to have their voices brought to the fore so that they join the broad-based ad advocacy campaign network. This, uh, to achieve this, federal, uh, the Federation of Muslim Women Associations in Nigeria has taken a giant step to see that it supports the activities of issue list, which I've just heard. They have given the facsimile of, the pre of what happens at present, which is correct. You will see children, women dying every day. One wonders what is happening. If you leave these children to die every day, the father suffers and the mother suffers. Nobody will sleep with the eyes closed, their eyes closed when these people are suffering. So Form 1 takes it upon it with its mandate in the PACFA project to see that it brings, up, up, it brings on board these traditional religious leaders so that they come and intervene, they help so that their activities, our, our activities and those of the, or that of the issue list activities and messages will be harmonized in order to achieve the project investment outcome. So we have involved, we have engaged, we have uh, gotten appointments, audience with emirs and chiefs, emir of Kano, Kaduna, Ezazaw, Nasarawa, Niger, Olubadon of Badalan, Akram of uh, Badagri, that of Niger, I've said it, and Bauchi, that of Das, emir of Das. And these people have been involved actively to see that children and mothers have uh, gained their own, they, they, they help, to help the helpless, those who are downtrodden, those who have, do not have the money to go to the hospitals to look for, to buy these commodities. So in the course of that, we have engaged with some ministers, commissioners at state level, local government chairmen, we have gone through them to see that they come on board to help us uh, uh, achieve this uh, numerous task. And uh, the outcome is that uh, during our interactions, we have, we, before then, we have trained about 221 faith-based organizations. We have mentored, we have given them capacity building to be able to plan, to advocate, to be advocates, to, uh, to plan and uh, carry out the activities that will be in support to those issue lists that we have just heard about, and that is uh, routine immunization, family planning, childhood killer diseases, in particular pneumonia and diarrhea, and, uh, root, uh, and nutrition. So these people have come to intervene, and their interventions has, wor has worked well. We have penetrated down to the Emirate Council, Emirate Council Committee on Health. If you look at Bauchi, for instance, there is something they call Boseko. This Boseko is Bauchi State Emirate Council Committee on Health. And we have taken a giant step to see that not only we work with them at the, on the surface, but we go deeply into the Emirate Councils to see that they are closer to the people of the grassroots so that they uplift these people. They are custodians of norms, values, and culture. They are associated with grassroots people. If you talk of pneumonia and diarrhea, if you talk of family planning, if you talk of nutrition, children abuse stunted, you will find that you, are, you find these people mostly in rural areas. In urban areas, people have the money, people are knowledgeable, people are aware of this. But in rural areas, those people up till now, to the time we went down to the grassroots, a woman who farms, doesn't know that she farms, she has this water leaf in her farm near her, she doesn't know that she is supposed to give to her child so that it helps, it is a nutritious value. She goes out to sell it in the market. That is means she is ignorant. Family planning, if you talk of family planning in a rural area, especially rural areas, they tell you that you, want to, you want, don't want them to give but you don't want them to have population. That is not true. And we have penetrated in this area to show a rural woman that family planning does not mean that you are going to give birth to either one or two, but it's all about child spacing. 
That is why we have brought our traditional religious uh, leaders to intervene, and they have come up.